Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another follow-up video on the Zero to Hero project Holy Relic. This will be the last part of this video. In the previous video, we showed you after Act 10 was finished, all the way to we to us starting to upgrade gear pieces on the build. And at that point, we just powered through to the point where we needed to get some final upgrades. And I made a bit, a bit of a notepad here that I'll be showing you. So basically, the upgrades that we were planning before we did Conquers and Sirius was to get a random life resistance six link chess piece, which was going to cost us about 15 to 20 C. I think I paid 15 chaos for the one I'm wearing. I'll show you the gear in a bit. Uh, one or two minion damage with life jewels, 5 to 15 C. I think I paid 7 chaos for the one I was wearing. The total budget of this character landed on around 160 to 170 chaos orbs in its current state. We looked at two different large cluster jewels with Renewal or Feasting Fiends and decided that Renewal would be the best one for us. Uh, the jewel I bought cost about 6 chaos, but I found another one that would be a price tag of about 8 chaos that I crafted myself with some alterations. So the expected craft cost was about the same as we expected here. Uh, two small cluster flexible sentries, they cost about 6 or 7 chaos each. I ended up only using one with some extensive changes because we ended up having a lot of lack of damage as you can see in the gameplay footage we did earlier today where we failed. And well, we didn't fail, we actually we did kill Veritania, but she was such a bitch to deal with. And also the um, some of the other conquerors were very tricky to deal with. And surprisingly, the Al Hesman Poison one was actually the easiest of them as long as you knew how to move. Um, so these changes we did was basically to cut down on our defense to get ourselves more damage because there was a huge lack of actual damage output. So the expected body to finalize character to kill Conquerors and Sirius was about 185 to 190C. We did it with about 170 to 180 Chaos. It's a little bit below what we expected, but I will say this, you kind of want to get more currency invested into this build for this to be comfortable for Conquerors and Sears at Awakener level 8. Anything before that was very comfortable to play with. It was survive it was reliable, sturdy, the clear speed was okay. Um, I think I personally prefer the Dominating Blow, and because of uh, my comparisons with this build to the DB build that we did in a previous Zero Tier project, I will not be making a forum guide out of the Holy Relic build. I know you can do this build very well with more currency invested, but the DB just is so much better at the lower budget that is about the same, if not better, at higher budgets as well. So it's a niche playstyle you can play it if you want to, but we finalized the project and we did kill the Conquerors as well as Awakener 8 series. So the goal has been achieved with a very limited budget on it. Uh, not too happy with the results as you can see in the gameplay footage uh, in, uh, that you're watching right now. Uh, some things that I wanted to mention with this was actually that I was using Cruelty support chain instead of Control Instructions. This was a change I did later, but I had already purchased a Corrupted Six Link, so I couldn't change the colors. I did use an Empower Level 3 to make up for this change though. I was also using Cold Penetration instead of Hypothermia, which I think I should have changed, but since I didn't want to buy a leveled one, I would have to re-level it, so I decided to keep using the uh, Cold Penetration. Hypothermia would be better. Uh, another change I did was uh, to actually include Cyclone next to the Static Strike and ignore the increased duration. This allowed me to, when I was clearing packs, to hit sometimes with the Static Strike, and but for the most part, I actually went back to using Cyclone. In lower tier content, the Static Strike felt better and was just generally faster to clear with. But as, as content got harder and harder and more tankier, uh, it was actually smoother to use uh, either both or just the Cyclone. It just felt more reliable to go with. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention in terms of damage upgrades that you could do uh, is that if you get a perfectly divined uh, cooldown recovery for the Holy Relics on the Joffrey's Helmet, that will increase the amount of hits you can do per second, which will drastically increase your damage outputs. Uh, other things as you're progressing, which we've done in the start between Act 1 and 10, we did um, a normal and Merc Lab, or Crew Lab, sorry, uh, to pick up the unnatural strength and ascendancy node for increased level of our minion skills. After that, the Merciless Lab should be Mistress of Sacrifice and get a trigger weapon, which I'll show you in a bit as well. This gives us a fuckload of defense and a lot of uh, survivability. But Uber Lab does the same. Once you're able to do Uber Lab, we recommend doing that as soon as you can, because Bone Barrier increases the survivability of your minions, most notably the actual Carnage Chief that generates Frenzy Charges to you, which is another change I've done with moving the Cyclone and Static Strike so I can actually use Life Tap, uh, which I think was much better because then we could have reliable charges up. Mostly that's for us rather than our minions because they don't really scale that well, or well, the Holy Relic doesn't scale that well with Frenzy Charges as compared to many other minion builds because of the fact that they don't actually attack, they have a trigger, so they only get the damage scaling, which is honestly not that big. 
Um, other than that, I would say that a divergent alternative quality Holy Relic would be so much better. I did end up buying a level 21. It cost about 15 chaos, 20 chaos, I think. And the damage difference was very noticeable on that as well. Very tiny was probably the most annoying of the conquerors. Because uh, if you don't serve her down in the initial stage of the fight, she teleports away. And when she comes back, it is very likely that she's going to be stuck and standing outside in the storm. And you cannot stand there and tank it. I tried a few times. Uh, and it's just devastating to try and be in that storm with her. You will die doing so. So it's mostly just about running around in the middle waiting for her to get back in so you can actually do damage to her. So it's, uh, it was really fucking annoying. Either way, um, so I'm going to show you the tree first real quick. What I've done here with the tree. <clears throat> the tree changes was actually to only use one flexible sentry in the large cluster. I also took away the life nodes in the bottom side here to make room for a uh, high amount of passive large cluster with more damage. In my case, I have uh, alteration, regal craft, all attributes, increase effect and renewal. Not really that big of a deal. Instead of 10%, I get 12%, which is pretty, pretty good, to be honest. And I had ended up using a normal abyssal jewel here instead of a cluster jewel for the flexible sentry. So I only used one. The other change was actually to pick up the enduring bond and I took away the anointed flesh to get room for these nodes for more damage. And I took away the crystal skin, uh, ascendus, sorry, uh, oil node from the uh, amulet, and I picked up the ravenous ward. Now, yeah, I could have done a lot more damage if I got a plus one level of all intelligence, gem, dexterity, amulet, for example. Problem is that they go for about an exalted that would break the budget that we put on this build. Instead, I kept using the Jinx Studio, and the oiling of the ravenous ward is much cheaper than the crystal skin. So we ended up actually saving in on our budget doing that decision. Other than that, that's like the changes we did on the tree. Um, I had an eight passive cluster jewel before, uh, which I, we bought for five or six chaos. Uh, we, we did find a 12 passive one. We can show you the price on this. If I do this with the um, item level 50 for renewal, I think it is. It's like one or two chaos, three, four. So it's really the same amount of price. I think that this one had a little bit higher item level, should maybe be a little bit more pricey. No, it's 5C, so it's barely any difference. So the, the cost of the jewel is the same. Just get a high amount of passive, 12, 11 or 12, preferably 12. Just alteration, craft renewal, or feasting fiends, augment regal, and you're done. It's very, very simple. Unless, of course, you want to go and do this and look for one with renewal. But you're going to have to pay the price of 10 to 13C. You're going to get out a lot cheaper than that if you craft it yourself. I did the same with a flexible sentry, for that matter. The other jewel I was using was a simple life mini damage uh, jewel. The lightning damage was a bit uh, annoying because it doesn't give me that much since I am using static strike every now and then, which deals lightning damage, which means that that lightning damage is completely useless. So just any type of life with mini damage when you use a mini skill recently, which you will when you use predator. So I'm going to show you the link changes I've done. In the uh, Gemini Claw, which I explained in the Dominating Blow project we did earlier, we use Deafening Essence of Fear on a Gemini Claw. Just roll it till you have a suffix open so you can benchcraft, trigger socket and spell when you use a skill, and you're done with the Claw. If preferably, you would want to have some sort of attack speed on here, and if you can get something like Lightning or Fire Damage for EE, that's just a nice bonus, but not necessarily needed. Other than that, the Joffrey Helmet is the same as I've shown you before. We have the same shield with the Life and uh, Recover Life on Block. This is most the most expensive piece on the gear. I think we paid 45c for this one. Uh, amulet is like I mentioned before, one or two chaos, and then the oiling. Uh, the chest piece, I think we paid 15 chaos for this one. It's just a generic corrupted six link with life and resistances. I did pick up the one with lower life just to get some dexterity to help out with that. Darkness of the Throne, three chaos. Boots like 5c with uh, life and resistances and a high movement speed. Gloves, well, you just do the uh, the trick with the jewelers from the benchcraft to color them for green. Socket wise, we're not using an anime guardian. Uh, we are instead having convocation inside the unset ring. We have desecrate, bone offering, and frostbite in our trigger weapon. And the shield is covering the skater boss with bone chill and unbound ailments. And in the boots, I'm using generosity with a stone golem, hatred for the generosity, and a feeding frenzy for the golem. This setup is allowing me to get the feeding frenzy buffs mixed to taunt from the stone golem, which is honestly a saving grace for this build, since so you don't already have that many. Um, side targets for the enemies to hit rather than yourself, which can be quite devastating, which is very noticeable in the higher tier maps. Uh, in the helmet, we're using Static Strike with Life Tap this time instead of Increased Duration, and I'm using the Fast Attacks for the Static Strike, and then a Ray Spectre. The combination of this is because we're using a Primal Crush Claw and a uh, Carnage Chieftain, and the Carnage Chieftain requires the Life Tap. And just make sure you keep that on a low level, because otherwise it's going to cost you more life to cast your Static Strike. 
and this is perfectly fine. So what I would do when I play versus bosses is that sometimes I would click the static strike and then I would keep cycloning around the target, which gave me the highest APS, which was really, really comfortable. In the gloves, we're using the Warring Blades, fast attacks, and putting the cyclone in there to give me the fast attacks. For higher budgets, I would normally, I would probably put this setup in the pair of boots and try to get like a 45 boots because that will give me so much more defense. So those two would be switched basically to get a 45 pair of boots. Uh, it doesn't give you 45 on the cyclone, but it does help with that. And the last socket would be a dash. So to the go to the Holy Relic combination that I've been using, I've been using a Holy Relic 2120. I had a cold penetration, which should have been a hyperthermia. There's going to be a POB in the descriptions below. So it's going to be hyperthermia. I was using cold penetration and power level three, higher body, you go for level four, of course. And then you have minion damage, increased area of effect, which I switched for predator for single target, which is very comfortable. And then I had cruelty, which should have been controlled destruction. So if I wanted to do a little bit more damage. So basically, again, I would switch my hyperthermia in instead of my cold penetration, and I was switching cold troll destructions instead of cruelty. And then for single target, you switch between area of effect and predator. And that's essentially the links I've been using at Ruby's Concoction for overflowing chalice. Not really needed, but it does uh, get a little bit more quality of life by using this kind of setup. And that's essentially the changes I've done. Uh, we ended up being level 86. Um, you cannot do elemental reflect maps. I would recommend using the Soul Lunaris and upgrade the uh, Sirgan Shadow Alchemist, which is from the, one of the highest maps, whatever it's called, uh, that allows you to avoid projectiles that have changed. So if we go in here and I search for Shadow Alchemist, uh, it should show up up here. It is the Foundry map. If you do this one with a Divine Vessel, like this one, put that in the map device with the Foundry map and finish the boss, you can upgrade that ascendant, sorry, that a pantheon to avoid chain projectiles. So I was having struggles with one map where I died consistently because of chain projectiles. So don't do that unless you have this one upgraded. Don't do elemental reflect. Try to stay away from no region maps uh, the best you can. Everything else was kind of fine. I would be a little bit cautious when it comes to elemental weakness if you're not the elemental weakness capped. And I would also try to stay away from uh, vulnerability. Temporal chains, for example, those were perfectly fine. You barely noticed the effect that happening on you in maps. Uh, the jewels I was using in the Darkness of Throne to finalize this was a blind on hit, which is very crucial. Would definitely make sure that you have one of these. The taunt on hit is a bit whatever, since the taunt on hit only works for your guardian, your specters, and your golem. Your golem is already casting a taunt, so this one felt very wasted to have in this build generally. Um, so basically, the pros and cons was basically that it was a very different playstyle compared to Dominating Blow. The build performs a little bit worse than DB on a lower budget. With more currency, it will be somewhere on par with it, and higher budget the DB would be better. So I don't think that this is a really good build. I'd say that it's an okay build to play with a different play style. It's really fun to play, that'll give you that, but not too happy about it. So I will not be making a written guide for this. But we did finalize the project. We did kill Awakener 8 Conquerors. We did kill Awakener 8 Cirrus. And I hope you guys enjoy the ride. And uh, got to see how I would progress and change the things. It was good to see this build hit a brick wall where I needed more damage to actually get past these fights with the budget limitation we put on it. And we achieved so with the changes displayed. So the new POB will be in the description below. Hope you guys like these, uh, this type of series of videos. The next project I will be doing is most likely going to be Path of Math's Eye of Winter Minor build. Uh, which should be able to kill even content like The Feared on a too exalted budget. I will be focusing on Awakener 8 series and the Conquerors on a one exalted-ish budget like we've done in the previous videos. So that's going to be the next stage. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay safe and keep rocking.